What's up guys? So about two weeks ago, a YouTuber by the name of Tom Scott came out with a video titled This video has blank views where blank was the number of views the video had. I thought this was super cool, so I decided to code it up and I think this really shows one, how cool APIs are and two, how we can leverage the YouTube API and other APIs and why this matters. So I'm gonna show you how Tom Scott coded what he coded and how we can code different things with the APIs, namely the YouTube API. So for starters, an API or an application programming interface just helps interface between the back end, which saves information, and the front end, which displays that information to you. So since front ends can vary so much across platforms, so we'll see a different front end for YouTube.com than the one we'll see for YouTube for iOS, than the one we'll see for YouTube for Android, companies want a way that they can interface between that front end and the back end to show that they're sending consistent messages regardless of the front end and they use APIs for that. So when on YouTube I click the like button, that just sends a message to the youtube.videos.rate API. And this message is called a request. And it then assures that I put a like on that video and saves that in the back end. So by YouTube providing public API access, it means that we can just do this programmatically rather than with a click. So I can send a message called a request directly to youtube.videos.rate rather than clicking the like button to do that. So to hammer this point home, when I go to YouTube Studio to edit a video description and title and then click the save edit button, I'm sending a message called a request to the youtube.videos.update API. The only difference between doing this on the web user interface rather than just sending a message directly to that API is that through doing it on the web user interface, I'm getting this perceived affordance that when I click save, the description and title will be saved. And that just tells me that YouTube has a good user interface. So in order to curb misuse of the API, so people aren't posting thousands of videos a day, disliking every video, they put a quote on how much you can use the API. And that quote is 1 million units. And then they describe units and break that down into different operations. The main operations are a read operation, which is one unit, a write operation, which is 50 units, and an upload operation, which is 1600 units. So if we're trying to do what Tom Scott did in his video, he just reads the video statistics, that's a read operation, it's one unit, and then he writes back to the video title, and that's a write operation, which is 50 units. So if we're trying to split up 1 million units per day into 51 unit calls, we can make 19.6 thousand API calls to YouTube per day. And then if there's 86,400 seconds in a day, we can make a call approximately every four seconds. But since YouTube doesn't even update the API that much or the views on your channel that much, we can just do it once a minute or once every two minutes. So in order to do what Tom Scott did in his video and read the video statistics and then write back to the video title, we just need to go to the YouTube data API, hit videos, hit list, and then we need to do the youtube.videos.list operation and all we need to say is what we want, which is the statistics, but we can just say all these things. And then a video ID, so if we're looking at MBA, he's not human moments, we can just pass in what's after the V equals and the video ID, and we should get around 1.7 million. So if we put this in here and then say execute, this should hopefully give us a 200 response saying that this worked. And cool, it does, and it says that we have 1.71 million views. Sweet, so that worked. So then if we wanna update the video name, we actually can't do this for this video, but we can do it for our videos. So you can probably see how this becomes sensitive where YouTube and Google want you to authorize your identity. So in order to work with this, you're going to wanna make a Google OAuth2 key and a Google API key in the Google Console. So I'll leave a link if you wanna do this yourself. You need to go in the Google Console, create a project, and then make an API key and an OAuth2 identity so you can authorize yourself as the person who's updating your videos or asking the YouTube Data API for information. So just to talk you all through how this code works, it's basically doing exactly what I was talking about. I just have this one function, get video views, and it gets the view count. And basically it's just going to call uh, the youtube.videos.list API with my API key. And then that's going to pass back in to my main, the view count, 
and then in my main I'm going to call the change video title function and then that's going to change my video title to this video has blank views and then uh, that's going to make a request to youtube.videos.update and then change that title. So Google and YouTube want to make sure that I actually own the account that I'm talking about changing the video title for. So it's going to make me to it's going to make me authorize doing this the first time I run through it. And then what I'm doing on my main is I have this class credentials so I can save a pointer to these credentials that I authorize so I don't have to go through this again and again and again. So basically I'm going through it this one time. I have to go through this consent screen and then it'll update my video title. So I want to click my YouTube account. This isn't verified, but it's not actually used publicly, so it doesn't need to be verified. So I allow, and I'm given a key, and this key is going to let me update my video title. And then now that I've updated my video title, it's going to send me a response. I just like put it there so it just like tells me that it's working correctly. And then it's going to send me to the URL that I'm updating the video title for and tell me if I'm correct. Or, or, or not tell me if it's correct, but it's just going to have the updated video views and title. And sweet. It <laughs> Last point, when you guys are running a project like this, it needs to run in perpetuity. So I'm hosting my code on the cloud and then using screen so it can run as a background task. So if you have any questions about that, please just let me know in the comments and I'm also going to try to put this code on GitHub so if you want to play around with it, you can. So piggybacking off of what Tom said in his video, nothing's permanent. So at some point the EC2 instance that I'm hosting this Python code on might be reclaimed by Amazon or at another point YouTube might lock down its API and my API calls might go bad or at another point this video might hit 100 quintillion views and the length of the title will be longer than 100 characters throwing an error in my Python code. But honestly building it was 99% of the fun. I hope you guys enjoyed learning more about YouTube and the YouTube API and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below and if you have any other video recommendations or things you want me to talk about in the future DM me on Patreon or comment them down below. Thanks so much guys. Peace.